Hello Stitchers and welcome to this month's Janome Stitch Club UK. My name is Julia and I'm one of the Janome educators and every month uh, I take you through your paces looking at some of the different stitches, techniques and feet on your Janome sewing machines and this month it is the turn of the buttonhole foot. Um, now Certainly, this was a complete game changer for me when I upgraded my machine from uh, a mechanical and went on to one that had the the one step buttonhole. Oh my goodness, life changed. Certainly, as as I knew it, that's for sure. Um, so I thought that would be fun to go through and have a little look at some of the do's and don'ts and how to get really neat finish on your buttonholes. I have also done a project if anyone wants to have a go um, and it's not dressmaking because I thought that was going to be a bit dry frankly so I thought we'd go for something a little bit more interesting and the story to this is that uh, recently I was away in uh, the Seven Valley Railway and we had to drive through this village called Button Oak at one stage and I was thinking oh my goodness imagine if there were a tree just covered in buttons and this is where this has come from um, there is a PDF that you can download from the Janome website um, and then you can make your own button oak your family tree so what I have done is everybody in our family has got a leaf and all of these leaves but I'm trying to do this one-handed but they button on and button off so there you go your own button oak uh, you don't need to do anything quite this complicated you don't need to put names on them either it was just a, a little idea for if you wanted to have a go at buttonholes if you've got toddlers this would make a fantastic uh, busy book page that's for sure um, so the first thing that I'm going to do though is just go through the basics on the buttonholes and then this project I am going to whip through it, speed the camera up etc um, because we've been through an awful lot of the techniques that I've used previously uh, but as I say I'll, I'll speed it up and do it just with sort of uh, rather than talking you through it and you watching me so okay so why don't we get on with it? So let's take a more in-depth look at the buttonhole foot. This is the one for my Atelier. Uh, this is the one for the M200, which is a seven millimeter. So if you're on a one step buttonhole, you're gonna have one of these two. Okay, they work in a very similar way. Um, Obviously, these are bigger machines, wider stitches, etc. So you've got a little bit more choice there. What the first thing you have to do is actually put the button in the back. And there's like a, a ratchet system here where if you hold it firmly here and then just pull it back until this gap here is big enough for your button and you pop it in. Oops. And then it springs out. There we go until that button is in and then what that does is it gives you this gap here which is going to tell the machine exactly how big to make that buttonhole if you are going to be putting buttons on to your garment that have a shank for example or they're a weird shape say they're an airplane or something like that then what i've got is i've got a collection of plain buttons uh, this sort of button in my sewing box all different sizes so I just match it up to the one that's closest to this flat button so that it's going to sit in here much much easier rather than trying to get you know that strawberry shaped button in here or something like that okay so they work in the same way um, you've got a slight adjustment here as well the small and the large so once we've pulled it out for example to its largest size here um, which is almost one and a half inches, so quite a big size button. Um, I can also adjust it very slightly. There's a little screw here which brings it back a little bit more. Same going in the other direction. Okay, they look terrifying because they're, they're huge, aren't they? But in essence, this is your actual foot. 
this is all just the gubbins that you need to tell the machine what to do basically so i'm going to put the button in the back here that's going to be the button i'm using on the project and then i just want to have a quick run through some of the different options that you've got for button sewing and why you've got those different options as well so there's a little bit of kind of um housekeeping to be done you've got an awful lot going on with this foot so things to watch are when you actually attach the foot and here's the let me use a pen here's the bar that is going to go onto your actual ankle here okay i've already i'm just going to drop my presser foot down and then i can just alter it that's it but what I want to make sure here is that I haven't caught my thread in it for a start. I want to make sure I'm not going to catch my thread in any of these bits around here as well. Okay, this here is the gap that's from the button at the back. And the most important thing to do is to bring the buttonhole lever the bh lever as it might come up on your screen down okay it will either be gray or white or black um, i'm going to put a little picture up in the corner here of what you'd get if you were on something like an m200 m100 etc because a lot of the machines if you do not bring this down um, it's either going to beep at you or not let you do the buttonhole basically it's going to say don't be ridiculous i have no idea how big that button is okay so if i lift that foot up here you can see what this does it basically is going to hit the back stop which tells the machine you need to stop here this is how long the button is and then it will start coming forward so this is absolutely crucial okay it is not the need in on some machines you've got the needle threader at the front it's sitting just in behind it okay so make sure that you've got the right thing first okay in the instruction and i will say this do absolutely do go to your instruction book when you're doing um buttonholes i think the instructions are super good for buttonholes actually and really show you exactly where everything should be what you should have on your screen what stitch etc etc so do 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 i know i say this every time and i'm not convinced that you actually do it but anyway i'm hoping one day um <laughs> finally it will get through do use your instruction book so we've now told the machine what size of button we want to make okay so let's just give ourselves a little bit of fabric under here and I'm going to drop the presser foot down now I'm finding that thread because I do think that's important now this is personal preference if I'm doing buttonholes on a garment I like to have the bobbin thread up on the top so it's much much neater underneath so I automatically would start with a needle up down pull up that bobbin thread and then I'll have both of these out to the side for when I start sewing. I let it sew a little bit, I'll show you in a minute, and then I, I actually trim it up. Uh, personal preference. If you don't want to do that, then just make sure, um, let me get something to poke that back down, make sure that those threads are over to the side here okay and you can actually kind of hold on to them so that they don't get messed up into your actual buttonhole um you know we want these buttonholes to be really really neat so i'm going to put us on quite a slow speed and drop that needle down and then we'll start going so the first thing it's going to do is a tiny weeny little stay stitch which runs all the way back Okay, and then it's going to do, this is the point, by the way, sorry, I should have just said that, that if I was wanted to, I could then trim those out of the way. Uh, and then it's going to do that little satin stitch 
over the top. So it's doing the buttonhole in the same way if you've ever been taught to do a buttonhole by hand. This is kind of how you would do it. You do a stay stitch first and then you do your actual buttonhole in stitch all the way around. So it's then going to go across when it gets to the bottom and you see it knew when to stop at the back, didn't it? Because we've got our buttonhole lever down. It goes across at the top a few times and then it's going to start working its way back down the other side. Don't worry, I won't do them all at this speed. I just, <laughs> I just wanted to do the first one slowly so you can see exactly what's going on. Okay, it's going to get back down to the bottom over he goes, both sides, and then it's going to do the little lock off, so three, four stitches at the end. When it gets to the end, depending on your model of machine, on this one I've got a screen come up, completed raised presser foot on my um, 607 or the M200, it beeps to tell me I'm finished. I think that's really important. You want to know that stitch is finished, that buttonhole is finished, because if you're then going to go on and do another one, you don't want it to be confused and start halfway through the process. So that's done and dusted. So here's our very beautiful buttonhole. OK, and on the back, there's a little bit that I can trim away. OK, so nice and neat. Now, housekeeping again. This here. I think one of the things that people often do, and I'm just going to stick another piece under here, is that when they are sewing buttonholes, and ask me how I know this, this is very easy to hit. So if I start sewing another buttonhole, okay, back it goes, and then it starts coming forward. And then I'm twiddling around. I think, oh, there's a little thread there. And I, I do that. Can you see what happened? I have now got the tiniest buttonhole in the world. And the reason for that is, and now it's going to start going down again because now it's completely confused, is because as soon as I touched that, that sensor then thought, oh, I'm finished. I've got to the end. This is the size of the buttonhole. So that is really, really important not to touch this, okay? And I know that's difficult sometimes. Um, I find the hardest time is when you're actually on, um, say, the button at the top of a neck uh, of a shirt or something like that, where you may have the collar out to the side. Um, and it's a case of making sure that is absolutely flat and just slow yourself down so you can keep an eye on everything that's going on. But I know that that's sometimes people say, but I practiced and practiced, the buttonholes were beautiful. I went on to the actual project and then I ended up with this, you know, teeny tiny what's going on, what's going on. That is what's going on. <laughs> OK, and like I say, ask me how I know. I don't know when it occurred to me one day and I suddenly thought, oh, my goodness, that is why, isn't it? So look, you can see I've got this, this mini buttonhole that I didn't really want. So, like I say, that is absolutely crucial. Um, you have got, and come back out here so we can see the screen. You've normally got on machines a pretty good uh, selection of buttonholes. So you've got your square ones, you've got the slightly roundy end ones, both ends or just one end. And then very often you've got these ones as well, the shank ones, which if you've got a button that's got like a, a little bit of wire or something like that on it, then that's the one you'd use, usually on a, a, a thicker coat or jacket as well, maybe, for those. You've got a stretch one as well. And then we go into the slightly fancier, like the heirloom one. And you've also got this rectangle as well, which is for doing welt buttons, holes or bound button holes. Here's one I kind of started earlier so this is the kind of thing I mean um, I'll demonstrate that in a second so on this particular machine and these bigger machines what you do get with it as well is a buttonhole plate which is this a stabilizer plate okay and what that does is it will 
hang on let's get that out of the way and take it off and what it does is it sits on top okay and it sits across sits across the feed dogs a wee bit as sort of protection um i find this really useful especially if i am on something like a silky fabric for example um that tend to shift around uh, so something like this for example um as i say it it's very it's a bit slippery so i quite like this i also think it's quite helpful in kind of lining things up and getting the buttonholes in the right place on this one i've actually marked the bottom of the buttonhole so as i bring it in i can use this guide here to keep everything nice and straight because this is the kind of material that is easily going to shift or move as i'm actually sewing it um i haven't used on something like this, I probably wouldn't use an iron-on interfacing because I wouldn't necessarily want it. Uh, it can wrinkle sometimes when it's been washed. So I would have, I've got a sewing one in here, which I can cut away even to remove at the end if I wanted to. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about stabiliser in a minute. So as I say, with this, I can kind of keep a bit more of an eye on what's going on. And as I say, it will go, oh, see, case in point, pull down the buttonhole lever. There we go. So up it goes, but it's holding it nicely. There is one of these available that you can get for um, this buttonhole foot as well. I'll put the picture and the um, number up in the corner. So if you do do a lot of dressmaking, especially if you're using these sort of fabrics, you might actually find that really, really useful. You can use sort of tissue paper and interfacings and things like that as well. But like I say, I, I do find this really useful for these sort of things. It's quite a neat finish. So these are probably different size buttonholes now because I can't remember <laughs> what size I was doing before but never mind that's just demonstrated what I wanted it to demonstrate so interfacing so like I say this is this is a very fine fabric and I wouldn't want anything stiff on here but I would want something okay I want something that's going to stabilize that fabric while I'm doing this quite intense stitching and this this job here okay and it's gonna really help but as i said what i can then do is i can trim the excess away so it's not going to actually impact on the drape of the garment or anything like that and i could if i wanted to actually cut away in between here if i wanted to or equally i could use a um wash away stabilizer which i've done before on um those more like organza something that's a bit more see-through so you don't actually want to be able to see anything we've sort of talked a little bit about stabilizers before but like with like with everything in dressmaking i don't want to get too involved in that because that you know that is really opening a can of worms but when you're practicing your buttonhole do remember it is going to need some kind of stabilizer i think the other thing um to remember as well is the actual sizing of the buttonholes i think very often people don't realize that what you can actually do within the buttonhole that you've got is that you can change it so this was our first buttonhole just done on the regular setting so if i then go back to that one and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take up the width <coughs> As far as it will go okay and I'm also going to take up the stitch length as well so this is going to be a much wider stitch as it goes down so if you've got a more 
frayy material, for example, you might want something slightly wider to help alleviate that. Okay, now I took the stitch length up, okay, which has spread it out more. But what I can then do is I will just, I haven't moved anything, so I'm just going to run it completely again to fill it in so we can make a much thicker stitch again on there. Um, and as I say, it's it really does depend on the, the fabrics that you're using for this kind of thing. But actually, let's just do that and show you. So look, you can see how much thicker. It was bigger anyway, wasn't it? And then I've gone over it. Oh, I didn't do the other side, but I've gone over it again. So we're thicker again, aren't we? So I do think sometimes people don't realise that because as with everything, different fabrics are going to be different thicknesses. So, you know, if you've got something this thick or if you're on something this thick, obviously you're going to need to make adjustments here. Um, to make sure that it's stitching out exactly as you want it. So the bound buttonhole, uh, the welt buttonhole, let's have a quick look at that because I do think that that is a forgotten, forgotten creature very often. Um, so, for example, if you're making a coat and you've got something like this is boiled wool, so this is pretty thick. So to actually do a buttonhole on this, you, you could do it, certainly you could do it. But if I was doing a coat that I know is going to get quite a lot of um, push and pull, for example, I do actually think it's worth the extra time and effort. I haven't done the um, finishing on this, but the extra time and effort to do these welt buttonholes because they are so smart um, and on the underneath as well. So you just get this really nice finish, especially if you're not lining a jacket, which is kind of the thing, isn't it, with boiled wool, that you don't need to completely line it. So it's going to give you a really nice finish on the inside, especially if you do like the Hong Kong finish on the bindings as well. So I'm on that stitch here. So I've just got my rectangle. And again, I can adjust that. So because I'm actually on... Uh, this thick boiled wool I might take that up in size so I'm gonna make that quite wide so that I can actually make a feature of, of that I've made a bit of a feature here because I've used um, a contrast cotton instead of the actual fabric itself okay probably wouldn't use the hang on because but this one actually, I'm not going to use that. Like I say, it's going to depend on what you're doing. So I would normally have this all measured and marked up or whatever, but just for the um, telling me, didn't put my lever down. if you can see it's just doing literally that little uh, rectangle that you need to do okay so what we then do is clip in there and then I clip down I clip into the corners like so There's a the same sort of technique for making pockets as well on waistcoats and jackets and things. And then this all gets poked through to the other side. This is a very, very quick demo of this because they're not the buttons. And then you can press it. So that's the that's the hole you've got you press it and then you bring in these two little folds so you're almost pleating it in 
which is what gives you the sort of lips on the the outside that little bit there okay now I'm going to show you because in the instruction books now which one's this there is and you may never have actually seen this but look at that two pages taking you through the whole process of doing those beautiful welted buttonholes okay so if you've never tried it before have a little go because they are very satisfying and as i say for special coats and jackets and things like that they make a really really lovely lovely feature especially on those uh, sort of boiled walls and things like that okay so that's just a quick that's what that one's for right um we went through the others didn't we so i think yeah i think that's just pretty much it we've gone through buttonhole lever yep definitely we've done that the other thing i normally have uh fray check fray stop different kinds of names different brands etc it's almost like a glue so once i do actually cut into my buttonhole i would then add a little bit of glue around the edge just to kind of uh, keep that from fraying etc okay and when you do cut your buttonholes one little tip put a pin at each end and then go in with your seam ripper because that will stop you it means you can't then just sort of cut far too much right so that is a quick run through of So that's us done on buttonholes for this week. 
um, and hopefully you found that useful. If you've got any questions or comments, please drop them below. I do always check and answer the comments. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this and hopefully we'll see you again next month for something a bit different.